friends, it's a great pleasure to welcome you here tonight. Uh, I'm your host and MC for the, for the evening. I'd like to commence by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are gathered and pay my respect to the elders at both past and present, including any that may be here tonight. So we're here tonight um, after many years of hard slog to launch the Zero Carbon Australia Land Use Report. This report's been a collaboration between the Melbourne University's Sustainable Society Institute and Beyond Zero Emissions, and it demonstrates the contribution that both agriculture and forestry can make to a rapid reduction in greenhouse gas emissions in Australia. It also highlights the opportunities for landholders from reforestation and revegetation, opportunities that many farmers around Australia are already taking up. And this report is one of a series of projects that make up the Zero Carbon Australia project. And this aims to deliver a comprehensive blueprint for a zero carbon future in Australia, using existing off-the-shelf, commercially available products and technologies and processes. For those of you who don't know, we've already launched the, the stationary energy plan, the buildings plan, the high-speed rail report, and the laggard to leader report. And in the pipeline, we have an electric vehicles report and a report looking at Australia as a renewable energy superpower. So as you'll hear from our speakers tonight, the land use sector is particularly important in addressing climate change. It has the capacity to draw down emissions from the atmosphere. And this sector has the most to lose as well as the most to gain from effective climate action. Because without action... The droughts, floods, bushfires we have experienced and will continue to experience are going to get more frequent and more severe. And this is not fantasy, this is fact. The world's scientists are agreed that the Earth is heading for two degrees warming, an average figure across the globe that means, in fact, great, much greater extremes in various parts of the planet. In the front covers of this report, you'll see comments and endorsements from people like Bill McKibben from 350.org and Christina Fugueras, the Executive Director of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. These are people who take climate change seriously, and so do we. Beyond Zero Emissions is a science-based, solutions-focused, not-for-profit think tank. We're completely independent, and we are largely volunteer-run. It's thanks to the many volunteers, and you'll see many of them tonight in blue T-shirts, that this report can be launched today. It's also thanks to the collaboration we have with Melbourne University that we can produce credible, robust, technically sound, rigorous reports. Reports that carry real weight when we speak to politicians and decision makers. In the drive to maintain independence and achieve change, we are reliant on private donations from baseload supporters and from sales of our reports. I'd like to thank all of you who are baseload supporters in the room and also any of you who want to sign up as a baseload supporter to sign up at our registration desk out the front. It's just $25 a month and your contribution ensures that we can produce and continue to produce the independent technical reports, that one, of the, one of which we are launching tonight. If you can't commit to becoming a baseload supporter, then please buy a copy of the land use report. It's on, the fir on sale for the first time today, and they're only $40 each. Tonight, you will hear a very clear case for supporting our important work. We have a very clear vision, a zero carbon Australia within 10 years, because we only have a decade or less to solve the climate change issue. And we will hear tonight that we have yet more solutions at our fingertips that are crucial to reducing emissions, this time from the land use sector comprising agriculture and forestry. Without climate action, our world is going to be a very scary place. The World Bank has warned that we're on track for global warming of four degrees by the end of this century, marked by extreme heat waves, declining food stocks, loss of ecosystems and biodiversity, and life-threatening sea level rise. They are also saying that adaptation to this kind of world may not be possible. 
Indeed, the Tyndall Institute goes even further and says that a four-degree world is incompatible with, and I quote, any reasonable characterization of an organised, equitable and civilised global community. Pretty scary stuff. And BZE has the courage and the conviction to be honest about the challenge we are facing. I've just finished reading Naomi Klein's recent book, This Changes Everything. In it, she says that our public institutions should be undertaking urgent climate planning with clear national plans and policies. Unfortunately, at the moment, they are not doing that. So someone else needs to pick up the slack. We want the report's findings today to be discussed and debated. We see the report as part of a necessary discussion, and that's why we are releasing this report as a discussion paper. The researchers undertook six farm case studies on real farms in Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland, and we want to continue this discussion with farmers, communities, Indigenous peoples, catchment management authorities, land care groups around the country. I'd like to let you know that photos are being taken tonight by BZD volunteers to be used to help promote the report as well as our organisation. If you don't wish for your photo be, to be included in those photos, then please let our volunteers know. Tonight, the researchers of the report, Andrew Longmire and Chris Taylor, will take you through the research and details behind the land use report. We're also very fortunate tonight to have John Pettigrew, former director of CPC, sorry, SPC Limited, and now president of Golden Broken Environment Group, and he'll be delivering a keynote speech. We're also very lucky to have Kate Orty, former Victorian Commissioner for Sustainable Environmental Sustainability, and also Craig Pearson, Professor Craig Pearson, former Director of the Melbourne Sustainable Society Institute. They'll all be joining a panel with our researchers after the presentation of the report. We'll also have about half an hour for a panel discussion with the speakers, and then 30 minutes allowing for a Q&A from the audience and the panel. Now, we all know that a project and launch like this doesn't just get off the ground without quite a lot of help along the way. And I'd really like to thank all of you and everyone here tonight for making this evening a reality. It has been a long road, and it's great to celebrate tonight. What a fantastic achievement. One of the individuals we have much to be thankful for is Professor Brendan Gleeson. Now, Brendan's currently director of the Melbourne Sustainable Society Institute, and the Institute has been an incredibly supportive and valuable partner in this research project. So thank you, Brendan. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Brendan to welcome you all to the university. Please. Thanks, Steve. Uh, is that working? Yep. Um, just in opening, I'd like to pay um, tribute to the uh, traditional owners of the land upon which we're meeting and to pay respects to elders past and present. Um, my name is Brendan Gleeson, not the actor, um, although occasionally being accused of being one. Um, and I'm... Um, I'm not quite shaking with excitement, but I, I am really, really delighted and pleased. So much so, I think my glasses are fogged up. Um, actually, I don't need them at the moment. I could know so well. Um, to see this report produced uh, in uh, such a quality format, that's just a pleasing ex ex extra aspect to this um, phenomenon. Um, but also being well aware, as I am, of the effort and the commitment to quality that marked the research process that pro produced this um, report. And I can vouch safe and, and assure you of that from the uh, perspective of uh, environmental scholarship and, and scientific scholarship more generally. So, um, and also, you know, it joins the suite in the array of other BZE reports which have been um, terrific contributions to public debate and quite compelling because they are um, evidence and research-based um, I have to say evidence-based. I normally reach my gun when I hear that term now because it's such a cliché, but a kind of necessary one because it's 
certainly used a lot in policy speak, um, but it points to that um, very, or it marks out that very important consideration that we need uh, a better uh, informed public debate around these urgent priorities um, and one that um, is rooted in science, as troubling as, as, the, te as the testimony of science um, is. Science won't answer all the questions for us, but it will certainly give us some signposts and guiding posts, and then we have to throw to our values, our priorities, uh, as a community and make some decisions about um, uh, our priorities about our futures. So, as I said, it gives me a great pleasure just to say a few words at the launch of this very important document, which has uh, a dual potential in my mind to be both informative and transformative. Informative because it is so well researched and um, based in, in all the um, best and most pertinent available evidence, but also transformative. And by the latter point, I mean, I'm pointing, I think, to its potential um, to stimulate uh, an informed discussion about the land use futures in these sectors uh, in this wonderful but very climate imperiled continent. And I think it will have that transformative potential um, and that, that is at least partly dependent upon you, the constituency that supports the work of BZE and of environmental discussion, thought and action generally. So I'm, I'm the director of the Melbourne Sustainable Society Institute, or MISI as we say uh, for short, uh, which has hosted the research project and uh, its key researchers and what has been very much, as Steve pointed out, and we welcome that, uh, a collaborative exercise with our partners, our friends at BZE, uh, and early on our colleagues and really part of the family at Melbourne University at the Melbourne Energy Institute. Now, I pay tribute to those um, partners and uh, to the collaboration that we've sustained over quite a lengthy period to produce um, this uh, report. I also, um, Steve got in first, but I also wish to um, pay tribute to and underline the contribution of my predecessor, uh, Professor Craig Pearson, who's sitting down the front here. Um, a bit nervous, really. It's like giving a speech in front of Dad or something. But uh, <laughs> he was the foundational, uh, in many ways, director of uh, MISI and really laid the paths and settings upon which we now start, uh, still largely track. And we're very um, grateful and mindful of, of his contribution. Uh, and his, the decisions he made about the commitments um, that we signed up to, and in particular it was he that signed us up to and joined us to this uh, collaboration and to the research. So, and, and he himself has contributed um, greatly to um, the research proce uh, process as senior um, reviewer, and he exemplifying his commitment by being down, here down from Canberra um, tonight. So I welcome and thank him and pay tribute to his role in this. I'm a relative later comer to the process. I've been around since the beginning of last year at um, MISI, and I've had the um, largely because of the um, work that Craig and also Craig Pribble, who I'll mention again in a moment, uh, in setting up the foundations and the collaboration from our side. I've, because that was so well done, I've had the relatively straightforward task of um, hosting the key researchers and liaising with BZE through who I can tell you. Um, as supporters of BZE, they were a, a wonderful and collaborative partner, but also very watchful uh, um, about how the resources, and appropriately so, how they were deployed and about the quality of the research that went into uh, producing um, this report. Thanks particularly to Steve, uh, as, uh, who was appointed CEO last year, who's been terrific to work with, and also to his predecessors and colleagues at BZE. But in my mind, at least, the greatest... Uh, tribute needs to be laid at the feet of the um, researchers, the key researchers uh, who did the hard work uh, in this report. Chris Taylor, Andrew Longmire, uh, who were housed with us and Mizzy and very much part of the family for uh, quite a while, during much of my watch, uh, and Jared Wedderburn, Bishop, based in Queensland. They, these guys were supported um, by... Uh, other co-researchers, um, the senior peers I've mentioned, and also students, um, interns, uh, including Melbourne University students. So congratulations to the team, uh, especially Andy and Chris, who used to pass by their office each day, and they were like installations. Uh, I wonder if they were, at one point, whether they were inflatable. They didn't leave the um, 
you know, didn't leave the office uh, at night. They were there, you know, day in, day out, working away on this report. And also, of course, there were other dimensions to the work involving uh, interviewing and consultations, which took them elsewhere. I'd also like to thank uh, particularly Craig Preble, the executive officer of uh, MISI, who has been a stabilising and chaperoning presence during the uh, rather lengthy proce uh, process of the report's genesis and production. And just coming to the conclusion of my comments, I just want to say, at the core of MISI's mission are uh, three tasks. Um, fostering multidisciplinary research at the University of Melbourne across faculties, across the disciplinary boundaries in the area of sustainability, reporting and disseminating the results of this research and also um, enabling collaborations between the community of sustainability researchers at the University of Melbourne and external partners and agencies. And it gives me great satisfaction to say uh, that, this research, that the research project that produced this report met all of those objectives from our uh, perspective brilliantly and even more so in these very industry and corporately driven times, not always to uh, our advantage, I hazard to say, um, but increasingly industry uh, driven times in our in the higher education sector, uh, I draw special satisfaction from the fact that this is a collaboration with an NGO, with BZE, um, which shared our commitment to high quality research aimed at producing a more informed public debate around the, urban, uh, the urgent responses needed to um, the sustainability crisis that increasingly engulfs Australia. So well done, research team. Thanks to BZE for being great, indeed, exemplary partners for us uh, in this great project. And let the discussion begin. Thank you. Thanks very much.